As the episode begins, we're introduced to the high-stakes narrative of the Broadberry Heavy Space Mission. This first scene opens with an overview of Earth, a planet filled with biological diversity and rich resources, but now facing imminent catastrophe due to environmental changes and escalating political unrest. Flight Commander Alexa leads the team conducting final checks with the ground control and she's accompanied by a skilled crew. The pilot Casey, Flight Engineer Ray, Flight Surgeon Catherine, and Mission Specialist Jerry, and assisting them is Tina, an advanced AI unit. However, the mission faces an unexpected and urgent crisis. News arrives that long-range missiles from North Korea and Russia are in the air, with some targets already struck. The spaceport, where the crew is located, is next on the list, with an estimated impact time of only minutes away. The crew faces a harrowing decision. Delay the launch and face certain destruction, or proceed with the launch within a dangerously narrow one-minute window. Amidst a tense debate, they hold a vote, resulting in a 4-1 to one decision to proceed with the launch. Most crew members have sacrificed immensely to be part of this mission, and the weight of their choice is palpable. Alexa requests all launch control functions to be transferred to the spacecraft, extending her wishes of good luck to the control team as they prepare for the crucial launch into space. After successfully launching into space, Alexa attempts to establish contact with Mission Command, only to be met with silence. The crew then reactivates a harrowing emergency transmission. The United States has been attacked with nuclear weapons. Additional messages in various languages confirm that the planet is engulfed in a global nuclear war as they prepare to exit Earth's atmosphere. The crew is faced with a dire choice, and they can either choose to orbit a now ravaged Earth, a decision that will lead to a short life due to nuclear radiation, or they can continue their 280-day journey to Mars. Jerry, a crew member, introduces the concept of the Great Filter, a scientific theory from The Economist. This theory suggests that life in the universe is an exceptional rarity and postulates a significant test for any life form. Can it advance to a point of colonizing another planet before self-destructing? The mission of the spacecraft, now more crucial than ever, was initiated out of dire necessity as humanity stood on the edge of self-destruction. Alexa, the flight commander, holds on to the belief that the unity and familial bonds forged amongst the crew during their four year of preparation will carry them through this daunting journey. She expresses hope that those who might still be alive on Earth will find comfort and inspiration in knowing that the crew has reached beyond the confines of their dying planet. After successfully escaping Earth's atmosphere, Ray, the flight engineer, is struck by the devastating thought that everyone that they've ever known on Earth might be gone. With 230 days left until their arrival on Mars, a heavy silence falls upon the crew, who now face the somber reality. As time progresses, the crew continues to attempt communication with Earth, but without any success. Soon after, Alexa realizes the fruitlessness of these attempts and instructs Tina, the AI unit, to block any further calls to avoid further distress. With 201 days left until their arrival to Mars, the crew maintains their physical fitness through exercise routines, yet tensions inside the spacecraft become increasingly apparent. Jerry experiences a technical glitch while performing maintenance, adding to the growing sense of unease. As the mission continues with 155 days to arrival, Alexa secretly tries to make a phone call home, only to be met with a full voicemail box. This discovery deeply troubles her, and while investigating a noise, she stumbles upon Ray and Casey who made close contact. Ray notices Alexa, but remains indifferent, indicating a breakdown of professional boundaries and the crew's coping mechanisms in the face of their isolation and the potential end of humanity. Alexa then confronts Ray and Cassie about their developing relationship, highlighting the impracticality of such romance given the mission's constraints. She stresses that the mission was not designed to accommodate relationships or the potential of adding new crew members, particularly the risk of childbirth and the extra resources that it would require. Casey tries to reassure her of their carefulness, but Jerry interjects, reminding everyone of the strict rationing that they must adhere to and the impossibility of accommodating additional needs should Ray become pregnant. With 134 days remaining until they reach Mars, Catherine, the flight surgeon, 
seeks out Alexa for a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Alexa inquires if Catherine rejects leaving her husband for this mission, and Catherine admits that she had to make a tough choice between her marriage and a once-in-a-lifetime mission to Mars. She also questions Alexa about reoccurring nightmares where Alexa is at home with her family, only to wake up realizing that she is still on the spacecraft. This dream represents Alexa's deep craving for her own life and the stark contrast with her current reality. Catherine tries to confront Alexa, assuring her that they are a family on the spacecraft, with Catherine herself acting as a maternal figure. But Alexa feels a heavy weight on her role as a commander, responsible for leading them on what she fears might be a slow march toward death. As the journey continues with 115 days until arrival, Ray defies Alexa's orders and continues to send out distress signals to Earth. Casey points out the fruitfulness of this act, noting that even if someone on Earth were to respond, there's little that they could do to help. Amidst the tension, the crew receives a distorted signal. Initially, there's a flicker of hope, but it turns out to be a decades-old broadcast from a TV show, a remnant from Earth's past now echoing through space. Later, Catherine visits Ray, offering her a pipe as a form of solace. She suggests that Ray's anger will eventually give way to resignation, much like Alexa's. Catherine implies that their only way to support each other is through mutual understanding and coping with their grim reality. Meanwhile, Jerry exhibits increasingly strange behavior, and he stares at himself in the mirror, then looks away, only to look back again. In a bizarre act, he runs his finger along the rim of the toilet, making noises in his nose notebook that suggests he might be up to something unsettling. With 76 days left until arrival, the crew decides to celebrate Alexa's birthday to lift everybody's spirits. They gather for a small party, where Ray tries to play a tune on a pipe while the others sing the song California Dreamin'. But the mood shifts as Catherine, overwhelmed by the emotional weight of their situation, breaks down in tears. She confides in Alexa, expressing her reluctance to be seen as a maternal figure of the group, and Alexa, understanding her feelings, apologizes for putting her in that position. Jerry, attempting to lighten the atmosphere, claims to have the best gift for everyone, revealing that he has been secretly collecting data since the launch. He presents a shocking hypothesis. Their current experience is not actually real, and they're technically in no danger. However, their discussion is abruptly interrupted by Tina, the AI unit, sounding an alarm about an imminent solar flare that threatens to destroy the ship. Despite Jerry's insistence that none of this is real, and that they're victims of aliens who are experimenting on their minds, forcing them to fly and colonize Mars, he suggests that they have been placed in a replica spaceship to get the exact results of the experiment without their knowledge. As the ship's systems malfunction and more explosions occur, the crew, except for Jerry, adheres to the necessary protocols. Catherine, initially expressing belief in Jerry's theory, faces his anger when he accuses her of insincerity. Jerry, growing increasingly agitated, rants about their families being deceived into thinking that they're dead, and claims that they're being monitored through the ship's cameras. He points to the lack of crystallization amongst the gaskets as evidence of his theory. But the crew decides to ignore Jerry's conspiracy theories, focusing on stabilizing the situation, and tragically, Jerry heads back to the airlock, intending to expose himself to the vacuum of space during the solar flare. The rest of the crew, realizing the danger, seals the flight deck to protect themselves, leaving Jerry isolated. As Jerry opens the hatch and faces the solar flare, his fate is left uncertain. With 67 days until arrival, the crew, now subdued, cleans up the spacecraft, and Catherine examines the gasket and finds crystallization, contradicting Jerry's earlier claim, and shares this discovery with the crew. Ray, reflecting on her expressions, shares her belief in feeling her father's presence even in space, suggesting a sense of connection beyond the physical realm. Alexa, considering Jerry's theory, contemplates the possibility that someone or something might indeed be waiting on the other side of the walls, leaving the crew to ponder the unknown as they continue their journey to Mars. As the crew nears the end of their harrowing journey to Mars, Casey attempts to lighten the mood with a defiant gesture, raising her middle finger to the walls in case someone is observing them. This act sparks laughter amongst most of the crew, but Catherine remains somber. She announces the sad news of Jerry's death and cautions the crew against idealizing him. 
She reminds them that their reality has changed and that they can't expect to simply walk out of the door and be home upon reaching Mars. They no longer have a traditional home, and instead, they only have each other for support and survival. The long-anticipated day of arrival finally comes, and the crew gears up for the Mars landing. They successfully touch down on the Tharsis Quadrangle, a significant area in the Martian surface, and shut down the engines of their spacecraft. After Jerry's conspiracy theory and his tragic death, and the crew is left wondering whether they've really landed on Mars, or are still part of an elaborate alien experiment. To settle their doubts, Alexa instructs Tina to open the command module portal, and they gaze upon the red Martian sky, and they're filled with a bittersweet realization, and they indeed have landed on Mars. And apparently, in a very surprising twist, the scene shifts to a dark room where Jerry awakens, covered in a jelly-like substance. An alien voice speaks, noting the ability of the human race to surpass expectations and pass through the Great Filter, a feat rarely achieved by life forms. The voice notes that it took the destruction of Earth for humanity to reach this milestone, and despite the tensions, the curiosity and resilience of the crew remains undiminished. Jerry, who previously assumed that he was being watched, turns out to be the one who awakens, and the alien observers are impressed by what he had guessed and decided to make contact with the crew. And at last, Jerry observes the crew through the projection screens and on to Mars.